Another way to look at resonance is to look at what are called modes of vibration on a string. A mode is just a frequency at which a string, like the one shown here, wants to vibrate naturally in exactly the same way as a simple harmonic oscillator wants to vibrate naturally at some frequency. What we have here is a string that's anchored on one end, on the right hand side, you can see it's tied onto a clamp that's clamped to the table. And on the other end, I've attached it to what used to be a perfectly good mid-range driver and now won't work very well ever again. Um, we'll see in a minute. I'll, I'll zoom in on some of the details here to see how this thing is going to work. But the idea is that we're going to use the mid-range to inject energy into the string. We're going to move it at different frequencies and see what happens. See how the string behaves if we move it at a very specific and, and a well chosen in advance frequency um, to see if we can force it into behaving as it normally would when it's ringing at one of its modes of vibration. So you can see here this is a close-up of what I've done to that poor mid-range. I've, I've glued a post, in fact it's just a wood screw, onto the dust cap of the mid-range and uh, I glued some uh, some small sticks on there to keep it uh, to keep it upright because the string is pulling it sideways a little bit. What we're going to do is move that driver, the, the loudspeaker, up and down and that's going to of course move the string up and down as we'll see now. So here we can see what's happening. I'm driving the loudspeaker with an amplifier attached to an oscillator. The volume of the amplifier determines the amplitude so how much the woofer is moving up and down, and the oscillator I then use to determine the frequency, which is how many times per second it moves up and down. And as you saw a minute ago, the other side of the spring is attached to a clamp. I can change the frequency. This is about 5 hertz going up to, this is something like 10 hertz, 9 hertz or so, so 9 times per second going up and down. Or I could go the other way. I can go back down to 5 hertz, um, that's 5 hertz right there, or I can go all the way down, for example, to 1 hertz. So this is moving up and down and back up again one time per second. So this is the whole system again. I'm now driving it at something like 5 hertz, 5 times per second, and I'm going to increase the frequency bit by bit. This is maybe 6, 7 hertz, up to 8, 9 hertz. And suddenly you'll see when we hit 11 hertz, which I've already found out to be a magic number, um, what will happen is that the string will suddenly behave differently. This is 10 hertz and this is 11 hertz right here. So you can see now we'll freeze this. The string is in what's called its first mode of vibration. This is the frequency, 11 hertz, for this particular string in this particular setup. This is the frequency it wants to resonate at, the lowest one. This 11 hertz, so 11 times per second. What you can see is that even though we haven't changed the amplitude, the amount that the, the driver, the woofer, is moving up and down, the amount that the string is moving up and down in the middle has changed dramatically. And that's because it wants to ring at this frequency. Let's start the video again and see what happens if we increase the frequency again. So this is 11 hertz. Let's move it up. This is going up to something like 15 or 16 hertz, right? Uh, let's see, right here. So we've changed now, we're moving faster, still at the same amplitude on the woofer. Now let's go to 22 hertz and see what happens. At 22 hertz, and remember we, our first mode of vibration was 11 hertz, um, at 22 hertz you can see what we have here is the second mode of vibration. So this is the next frequency up that the string wants to vibrate at. 22 hertz is 2 times 11 hertz, so it's twice the frequency of the first mode of vibration. You can see again, I've frozen the, the video here so you can see what's going on. What's happening now is that the string naturally stops vibrating in the middle. But we still have two large uh, excursions, two points where it's moving much more than the woofer is, um, on either side of that point where it's stopped. But this happens naturally. I haven't done anything to the string to make this happen other than to put in the frequency where this mode wants to vibrate. So let's start the string uh, moving again. I'll start the video moving again and we can see what happens if we keep going up in frequency. So this is still 22 Hertz and then we change to something like 25, 26 Hertz. 
and we lose that resonance. Now let's go to 33 hertz, which will be the third mode of vibration. Here we are. Again, I've stopped the video so that you can see what's going on here. Um, it's basically the same thing again. We have a, uh, a frequency coming into the system, still at the same amplitude, um, but now the string naturally wants to resonate at this frequency, but in order to do that, um, a smaller section of the string has to be vibrating. So it naturally stops vibrating in those two sections you can see there in the middle. Um, and we have these three areas where the string is vibrating up and down more than the amplitude that we're putting in from the woofer. Let's, uh, let's start the video again and go higher in frequency. This is 33 hertz. Let's go up to 37, 38 hertz and up to 44 hertz. Right there. So at 44 hertz, we have the same behavior again. Now we have three points on the string where it's not vibrating and four points where it's vibrating more than the, the amount of energy that we're putting in or the, the excursion that we're putting in using the woofer. So this will keep happening as I go up in frequency. This is 44 hertz. If I multiply the original by five, I get 55 hertz. And of course you can see there's, it's the same behavior as I keep going up and up and up. Um, we can zoom in on this and we'll see that uh, that in fact the string really isn't moving in a perfect world it's not moving at all at one point it it's uh, it's completely still um, of course this this isn't a perfect system so there's a little bit of movement there you can see the blurring on the points where it shouldn't be moving and if we then change the frequency back down to say 33 hertz this mode goes away and it automatically settles into uh, its third mode of vibration um, so the thing to remember is that the string wants to do this. So if we had hit it with a, an impulse, if we had plucked it like a guitar string, all of these modes would be singing together at the same time. And that's, that's what gives a guitar string the, the characteristic sound that it has. It's the combination of all those frequencies um, playing together simultaneously at different amplitudes um, that makes the sound of a guitar or a violin or a harp or a piano um, barring any small details about tuning, um, that, that's what the, the balance or the relationship between the amplitudes of those different harmonics playing together at the same time is what makes those instruments have their characteristic sound.